In the last video, we saw that Lewis bases, called ligands, can bind to Lewis acidic transition metal ions. These ligands all have pairs of electrons that can be shared. They all have reasonably high energy homos. That's what makes them Lewis bases. When they're bound to the metal, they share their electrons in polar covalent bonds. Ligands come in many different types. Some ligands are anions when they're not bound to a transition metal, while others are neutral molecules on their own. We call ligands that are anionic when they're not bound to a metal X-type ligands. Examples include the halides, fluoride, chloride, bromide, and iodide, hydroxide, alkoxides, cyanide, and many others. Other ligands are neutral, stable molecules when they're not bound to a metal. These include water and alcohols, amines, phosphenes, and carbon monoxide, which all bind to a metal ion by sharing one of their lone pairs. Also in this category are alkenes, which can bind to a metal ion by sharing their pi bonding electrons. We call this type of ligand L-type. Many ligands can bind to metals using multiple pairs of electrons. Carboxylates, for instance, can bind using a lone pair on the O- and a lone pair on the neutral oxygen atom. Ligands of this sort, which bind through multiple different sites, are called chelating ligands, from the Greek chele for claw. The denticity of a chelating ligand refers to how many different binding sites it has. A monodentate ligand binds to a metal with a single atom. A bidentate one binds through two separate atoms, and so on. We sometimes refer to denticity with the letter kappa and a superscript number. So carboxylates can act as bidentate chelating ligands that can bind to a metal in the kappa-2 fashion. Each of the binding sites of a chelating ligand is classified as X or L, so a carboxylate is an XL ligand. Chelating ligands don't always use all of their potential binding sites. EDTA, a common reagent in biology labs, is ethylene diamine tetraacetate. It typically binds to metals using its two nitrogen lone pairs and its four anionic oxygen atoms. The neutral oxygens don't usually bind, so, ED, so EDTA usually binds in a kappa-6 fashion. Finally, some conjugated compounds can bind using several contiguous conjugated electron pairs. Benzene, for instance, has three CC pi bonding pairs of electrons, and it can donate all of them. The cyclopentadienyl anion, which is aromatic, has two pi bonds and a lone pair, all part of the same conjugated system, all of which can donate. These sorts of ligands are said to have hapticity, which is the number of contiguous atoms that a particular conjugated compound can bind to a metal through. We use the Greek letter eta to denote hapticity. Benzene can bind in an eta-6 fashion, and the cyclopentadienyl anion usually binds eta-5. You actually saw an example of this in lab when you worked with the acetylation of ferrocene. Ferrocene contains two eta-5 cyclopentadienyl ligands. Just like with polydentate ligands, polyhapto ligands are characterized with multiple X or L labels, depending on the charges associated with each electron pair. Benzene is an L3 ligand, while the cyclopentadienyl anion is an L2X ligand. We use the X and L notation to help us determine a very important property of transition metal complexes, the oxidation state of the metal ion. The oxidation state of the metal is the number of X-type ligands plus the overall charge on the complex. So, for instance, the complex PtCl6-2- has a platinum ion with six chloride ions, which are X-type, and an overall negative two charge, so the platinum ion's oxidation state is plus four. 
When talking or writing about metal ions with a particular oxidation state, we often use Roman numerals in parentheses. So we might talk or write about PtCl6-2- as containing platinum-4 or PT-4.